Americans for Fair Taxation presents the Weekly Chairman's Report, written by Steve Hayes, President of Americans for Fair Taxation, and recorded by Bob Paxton, a volunteer with the Florida Fair Tax Educational Association. And now, this week's Chairman's Report. Hello, I'm Bob Paxton with the AFFT Chairman's Report for Friday, September 22nd, 2023. Only the rest of us pay. The law doesn't apply to the connected people. Theodore Roosevelt wrote, No man is above the law, and no man is below it, nor do we ask any man's permission when we ask him to obey it. Now, we all know that society works best when the laws are appropriate and the citizens follow them. But few, if any, agree that everyone is treated equally by U.S. laws. We know that in many cases, the wealthy and well-connected members of our society are treated differently from the rest of us. Now, this is particularly true with respect to the income payroll tax system. Now, it's common knowledge that Congress sells income tax benefits to any group willing to donate enough money. Now, that's obviously unfair to everyone else, but when those purchased benefits are enacted into law, those who get those benefits are not doing anything illegal. This is why it's disturbing to read Richard Rubin's article in the August 27, 2023 Wall Street Journal. According to that article, a group of lawmakers, IRS officials, and state governments are encouraging certain people among us to ignore the state and local tax limit, called the SALT limit, that was included in the tax reform law passed by Congress in 2017. Now, only 11.5% of federal income tax filers who itemize their returns are affected by these SALT rules. The other 88.5% of federal income tax filers use the standard deduction. That's $13,850 for a single taxpayer, $27,700 for a married taxpayer. Now, prior to 2018, taxpayers who itemized their deductions and who paid $30,000 in state income and property taxes could claim that $30,000 as a deduction on their federal income tax return and thereby reduce their taxable income by $30,000. Now, if they were paying an effective income tax rate of 25%, this means this deduction saved them $7,500 in federal income taxes. Now, starting in tax year 2018, the SALT deduction was limited to just $10,000. Consequently, the person with a $30,000 state tax bill who saved $7,500 in federal income taxes in 2017 could only save $2,500 in 2018 and beyond. Limiting the SALT deduction cost this person an additional $5,000 in federal income taxes. Now, obviously, the SALT limits affected mostly the wealthier citizens living in states with higher state income and property taxes. And as you might imagine, this led to complaints both from the states and from the affected taxpayers. In response, many states created workarounds. Now, Mr. Rubin's article points out that many business owners can easily dodge the $10,000 cap on state and local tax deductions, and that costs the federal government as much as $20 billion a year. That's according to a new estimate by the Tax Policy Center. The state-based workarounds apply only to business owners who report profits on their individual tax returns. This means that they can escape the SALT cap, while wage earners, sole proprietors, and property owners can't. Now, entities such as partnerships and S-corporations enable closely held businesses to be organized without being taxed directly. Instead, they pass their profits through to their owners who report that income on their individual tax returns. Now, to implement the workarounds, states create elective taxes on those pass-through entities. The business chooses to pay that levy before passing profit through to its owners. That entity-level tax counts as the owner's state tax payment, and it effectively lowers the income the owners report to the federal government. The upshot? The state gets its tax revenue. The business owner effectively gets a full deduction for state and local and perhaps other tax advantages from having a lower adjusted gross income, and the federal government doesn't get all the money that lawmakers expected when they capped the SALT deduction. A Treasury Department notice issued just after the 2020 election said that this was legal. That notice said the Treasury Department would issue regulations with more details. But the Biden administration, however, has not issued any regulations, rescinded the notice, or expressed a policy view on the workarounds. In conclusion, here you have a federal law, the SALT limitation, that is evaded by many wealthy taxpayers. 
It flouts a federal law, and it has the will for cooperation of the IRS. A salaried taxpayer who pays $30,000 in state and local taxes is limited to a $10,000 deduction on his federal tax return. His neighbor also pays $30,000 in state and local taxes. Since he owns a business, he's able to deduct the full $30,000 through his company. Now that's clearly unfair, but perfectly allowable under the current income payroll tax law. Now, the only reason to have the complex income payroll tax system is for D.C. to control how much of our incomes we get to keep and to provide politicians with an ATM machine to finance their campaigns. Now, why would D.C. give up this almost unlimited source of donations? Well, they won't, at least not voluntarily. The only way they will is if the rest of us demand it. Congress and D.C. know that there's a better alternative to the present system, the fair tax. So instead of spending time and money doing endless hours of paperwork that don't create anything of value for yourself, your family, or the nation, why not eliminate the unnecessary waste? The fair tax transfers power from the government and bureaucrats to the people. We, not the bureaucrats in D.C., will decide how much tax we pay. So isn't it time to end this ludicrous tax collection system and the IRS along with it? When the fair tax is enacted, there will be no need to fear being audited by the IRS or raided by armed IRS agents because there will be no more IRS. Now, there's going to be a vote on the fair tax in the House of Representatives. Speaker McCarthy and the other elites didn't want it, but it was forced on them. So we now have the opportunity to force all members of the House to show where they stand. They can vote for the present income payroll tax system, or they can vote for the fair tax. They can support the corrupt income tax in the IRS, or they can vote to eliminate it. It can't be any simpler than that. They can hide the true cost of their government, or they can pass the fair tax and show everyone the true cost of government on every retail receipt. And finally, they can support the largest transfer of power from the government to the people, the fair tax, or they can vote against it. Now, if members think the fair tax needs to be changed, they can propose that change. Don't let them reject the entire bill because it has a flaw that can be easily addressed. Please stand with us and demand that your representatives support a much fairer, much simpler, and much more efficient way to fund the government, the fair tax. The fair tax doesn't pick winners and losers. Because it taxes spending, not earnings, the fair tax lets everyone save for their retirement tax-free. The fair tax will allow us to take back control. The income payroll tax system is broken. It's no longer working. We can't repair it, but we can replace it with the fair tax. So join us and take back control of our country and our lives, not with bullets, but with the elimination of one of the biggest threats to our liberty and economic prosperity, the income payroll tax. We should all remember Edmund Burke's warning that applies to our efforts to take back control. Nobody made a greater mistake than he who did nothing because he could only do a little. We should also remember this quote from George Orwell's 1984, which, if we do nothing, may foretell your and your children's future. If you want a picture of the future, imagine a boot stamping on a human face forever. So what can each of us do? We can write letters and make calls to our elected representatives and attend Zoom town hall meetings demanding that if they really want to allow Americans to take back control, the first step is to eliminate the income payroll tax system and enact the fair tax. Take back control. Help us pass the fair tax. Help us bring about real tax reform and stop future IRS abuses. By contributing or investing $10.40 a month, you help provide a financial base to Americans for fair taxation. Now, if you can make larger contributions slash investments, these will be used not for salaries as we're all volunteers, but for the needed updates to our economic studies, which will be vital for all future years. Please go to fairtax.org and invest in AFFT. It's an investment in your and your family's future. This has been the Weekly Chairman's Report, written by Steve Hayes, President of Americans for Fair Taxation. Check back every week for news and information about the fair tax and learn why the fair tax should replace our antiquated federal income tax system. If you'd like to receive a copy of the Chairman's Report in your inbox every week, sign up at fairtax.org.